Hello, my lovely Calimaris. This is Calimara here. Today, we're going to tackle probably the most highly requested Yandere simulator redesign on my channel. The Faculty Rivals, aka grown adult women who hold positions in the school faculty who are also fawning over a high school boy. Since I started redesigning the Yandere Simulator Rivals, the most frequent question I get is, what are you gonna do with the faculty rivals? Are you gonna keep them or get rid of them? What sort of concept are you going for? And those are all really valid questions because it's genuinely a terrible concept that Yandere Dev implemented in the game for a variety of moral, ethical, professional, and psychological reasons. This is definitely going to be a two-parter just because there's so much nuance to discuss and research to share between the two professions. So today we are going to focus on the teacher rival, Mida Rana. This is going to be more story oriented than my other videos, so if you guys haven't caught up with my original storyline, I highly recommend you guys check out my playlist. But essentially, this is my take on the teacher character and why Yandere Dev's original concept is utterly atrocious. Also, can I just say that it genuinely hurts that her name is Rana? because I also have an OC named Rana, and her full name is Kirana, and she is a god-awful representation of Ranas everywhere. But aside from the obvious she's a predator aspect of the teacher rival, why is she such a bad concept? Well, that's because this teacher character only exists to fulfill Yandere Dev's perverse fantasy and to give himself and other degenerate otakus like him sexual gratification. And look, I get it. We've all had some sort of crush on a teacher at one point in our lives and given the popularity of the student-teacher fantasy, it's clearly a common thing. But the main issue here is that we know for a fact that most of the fans who are still following Yandere Simulator's development are kids, the little girls. Obviously, they don't understand what the heck is going on with that teacher, unless maybe they're into girls as well. They wouldn't find any value in it. <laughs> What's that saying again? Oh yeah, don't push your kinks onto other people who can't consent to seeing it. See. Yandere Simulator is known as the game all about stereotypes, right? But while making this video, I realized that that's not quite right because although the characters are undeniably very stereotypical, they are designed to be sexualized more than they are stereotypical. This is the fallacy of the game. It claims to be something it's not and it hides its true colors. It claims to be a stealth murder game with a serious story, but it also claims to be a parody satire of those very tropes. However, I genuinely believe that first and foremost, it's supposed to be a lewd game, but Yandere Dev will never outright admit it. That's why we have so many bizarre mechanics like the panty shots, changing panties for skill boosts, skirts constantly flipping up when the characters move to the very designs of the characters themselves, which were clearly meant to emulate his tastes. Oh, and let's not forget, he literally proposed a mechanic where the character opens up her skirt, flashing the player when you check the inventory and included his characters in an adult anime game. Yeah. I think we can all agree that Yandere Dev is a ragingly, unrelentingly horny person. And if you don't believe me, go ahead and watch his Twitch streams, the kind of games he plays, and listen to his riveting, unfiltered commentary. I genuinely believe that Yandere Simulator was meant to be a trashy lewd game like the ones he enjoys playing, which is all fair and good. He can do whatever the heck he wants. He's a grown adult. But he can't come clean about that 
because he unfortunately garnered an audience of kids. And if he marketed the game as an adult game, he would lose the audience he already has. So instead of biting the bullet and actually doing what he wants to do, he's doing what his audience wants him to do while sneaking in components that he wanted. And that would be hard enough for an experienced game developer and writer to pull off well, let alone Yandere Dev. Plus, this current alternative he's implementing is a lot more shitty in my opinion because now he's irresponsibly pushing his X-rated fantasies and preferences to his young audience. So if you're totally cool with experiencing a man's wet dream, absolutely go for it. And the thing is, this concept of a predatory teacher could work if he made it so that the other characters viewed it as morally reprehensive and she actually gets repercussions from it. Like maybe she gets fired or arrested and put in prison. But of course Yandev isn't gonna do that. No, no, that's his fantasy after all. The worst thing about it is that this woman is literally written as a repeat offender because that's her freaking hobby and her bio literally says so far no man has been able to resist her charms oh great yeah that's fun just groping on the high school kids <laughs> inflicting lasting trauma and trust issues how is this woman not in prison let alone still getting teaching jobs again for such a prestigious school, you would think that they would do background checks for all their staff, right? No. Nope. And the worst part about this is that there may actually be some accuracy to that. See, I found several studies that state that there is a prevalent bias and double standard between the treatment of female and male SA perpetrators. According to a study by Howell, Egan, Giuliano, and Ackley in the Journal of Social Psychology, when James Darden, a 36-year-old male teacher from New Jersey, assaulted a 13-year-old female student, he was given eight and a half years in prison with lifelong parole, made to register as a sex offender, and had his teaching license and all employment in the public sector revoked. The judge even stated, You realize what you have done to this child? You made her a woman well before her time in a very inappropriate way. Which I think is kind of an iffy statement in itself, but at least the guy got a suitable punishment for his crime. But when it came to a male victim of the same age, who is also from New Jersey, his perpetrator, a 43-year-old female teacher, Pamela Deal Moore, only received a sentence of five years probation. And that's it. The judge justified the ruling by stating, I really don't see the harm that was done here. And certainly society doesn't need to be worried. In his words, the student was simply satisfying his sexual needs, and therefore the judge failed to find anything that showed this young man had been psychologically damaged by Deal Moore's actions. And that just gave me an aneurysm, I think. I had several tension headaches while trying to research this particular topic, and that's why it took me like four days to finish this script. So please like and subscribe, I work very hard. This is also supported by a similar study by Jetties, Tyson, and McGreal that was done in Australia in 2013, where similar court cases occurred with the same result. The female teacher received a much lighter sentence compared to the male teacher. The authors state that differential sentences for male and female perpetrators imply that the offenses committed by the females are less serious and less likely to have damaged the victim, when in reality, 
both male and female survivors of female perpetrated abuse still experience the same amount of depression, anger, low self-esteem, difficulties in trusting others, suicidal thoughts, extreme fear, self-harming behaviors, and sexual difficulties as male perpetrated abuse. Not to mention, male survivors have further been found to engage in externalizing behaviors such as bullying and substance abuse as a result of their abuse by female perpetrators and expressed intense rage towards themselves and the perpetrator. If you guys want to check out the sources I use, they will all be listed in my description. And that's exactly why I don't want this teacher character to even be a rival at all. Not only would the teacher get nothing more than a slap on the wrist and still be allowed to teach, Seiya would also have a harder time speaking out because of the societal bias that men can't be sexually assaulted, especially by a woman. It would completely ruin his future because he would be afraid that if he spoke up, it would affect his chances of getting into a good university. It would put a label on him that he is weak and can't defend himself, quote unquote, from a woman. And the fact that his abuser gets to walk away pretty much consequence free to do it all over again, given his own mental health history, it's not gonna end well. So, although there is definitely a story to tell there, that's not a story that I personally feel comfortable telling. It takes the storyline to a much darker place where I don't think it would be fun to play as a game anymore. And logistically, it doesn't make any sense because the school would have vetted her out and never would have given her the job in the first place. And even if Seiya, who is my version of senpai in case you guys don't know, is 18 and of legal age, the teacher would still be his teacher, and that power imbalance would very much still be there. Age alone is a powerful tool in coercing someone. We often view those with greater age than us to possess greater authority because naturally they've lived longer, they have more life experience than us and they know better. The knowing better part is the most crucial aspect here because evidently there are many people in positions of power who don't and yet we naturally assume that they do because it should be a given. What makes student-teacher relationships wrong isn't just because of the age of the victim. Coercion can still happen between two adults or someone older can be coerced by someone younger. It's about the power dynamic. See, when you are a teacher, you naturally hold a much higher level of authority, knowledge, and experience over your students. The power gap is even greater when the students are still in their developing years, say high school. Therefore, they must always be aware of that power they have over their students and just how easy it is for them to coerce their students. I actually have a friend who is a teacher and when I asked him what his perception about his role as a teacher was, he said, a teacher should always have several steps of separation from the kids. Since your main role is to handle their education and enforce discipline on them during school. But a good teacher should always be able to get the kids to engage in the subject matter and make them feel safe in the classroom. A teacher should always be available to talk about more serious issues and give life advice if approached. But know when to back off because we're not counselors. We're not licensed therapists. Teachers are also role models and mandatory reporters, meaning that they must report any suspected or actual cases of domestic abuse to protect their students. So from an ethical and moral standpoint, the fact that they would use that power to instead benefit themselves and harm the very kids they're supposed to protect is completely atrocious. And I know that there are plenty of awful teachers out there who clearly only took the job to pay the bills or, in Mida's case, to get off apparently. But essentially, the role of a teacher is to contribute to the success of the students and the school itself. Now, 
I'm not saying that teacher-student relationships that happen after the student has graduated, grown up, and no longer attends that school are also bad. It's not, because at that point, that power dynamic no longer exists. The teacher no longer has a duty of care over their student, and they're both consenting adults. Not an issue, totally fine. Plus, I think there's a much more significant role that the teacher character could play. So while she wouldn't be a rival, I do still want to keep her in the game. But before we get into my concept, I want to take a moment to thank Gaomon for sending me another one of their amazing tablets. If you've been impressed by my line work in this video so far, it's all thanks to the Gaomon PD2200 display tablet. It has 21.5 inches of HD display, 92% NTSC, and is fully laminated, meaning it offers extremely low parallax, which I definitely noticed and absolutely adored. It has 8 touch keys, an adjustable stand, and 8192 pressure tilt supported pen, which was even lighter and well balanced than the previous model they sent me. I was actually really surprised how sensitive the tablet was, and it was probably the closest experience I've had to traditional drawing on a digital media. Thanks to the low parallax, the pen felt very accurate, and it's also battery free. My package came with a smudge guard, instruction manual, a pen holder with extra nibs inside which we love, and the tablet came in with the stand and screen protector already installed which made setup even more convenient. Overall, I'm absolutely in love with the way it looks and the way it works. It's so sleek and modern and it offers so much space to draw on. I'm not constantly having to zoom in or out anymore which is such a luxury to me and I literally have no complaints about this tablet. Like compared to a Cintiq, I think this works just as well and offers so much more for a third of the price. A third! I'm definitely using it as my main drawing tool from now on and if you guys are thinking about getting a new drawing tablet or upgrading, check out the link in my description because I can't recommend it enough. At the moment, they also have a coupon for $60 off if you click this little box on their Amazon page. And now, back to the video. The teacher character would be Yan Chan's homeroom teacher. She has been a part of the game since the first week and she's been discreetly observing Yan Chan due to her strange behavior patterns. See, aside from planning curriculum and educating kids, teachers also assess students for developmental, feedback, and reporting purposes. Being an experienced teacher, she would have noticed that there is something remiss about Yan Chan. She performs well academically, but her mood changes very quickly, from bubbly and cheerful to stone-faced and cold in a blink of an eye, almost as if there is a switch in her head that turns her personality on and off. She doesn't seem to have any friends, but she has a penchant for starting rumors and drama among her peers. She has even exhibited worrying signs of psychological issues in her creative writing and artwork. Of course, it would take time for her to really observe and notice those patterns, and that's why she doesn't intervene until after Nico's week. Although, she has definitely been interacting with the player and trying to get them to open up and speak to her if they have any problems long before then. The player would see her as a mature, level-headed figure who is genuinely concerned for Yan Chan's well-being, and she would have shown that through kindness and concern that Yan Chan has never received before in her life. You can try to manipulate her when she starts suspecting that something is wrong, but this option will only work in the earlier weeks when the teacher doesn't know you well enough and while Yan Chan's mental state is at the most stable. Without any coping mechanisms and overuse of her medications, Yan Chan's mind will begin to deteriorate, which will make it more difficult for her to keep up her ruse. Really, the issue of your identity being revealed is only a matter of time. You can't keep pretending forever regardless of the route you're taking. So to recap the first video I made for this series, 
Yanshan is attending this very prestigious school under a fake identity. This is because she's still on probation as part of her discharge condition and had to do remote schooling as a result. I did a bit of a rewrite for her backstory in my discussing your feedback slash name reveal video because I wasn't happy with the story that was being told in the initial video, so please check that out. Therefore, to attend the same school that Seo was going to, she struck a deal with a wealthy student who was supposed to attend that year but didn't want to. Essentially, Yanchan is attending school, doing assignments, and taking exams for her while she goes traveling abroad. Initially, I wanted the player to choose the protagonist's name, but that would mean that they would be naming the rich girl instead of the actual protagonist, so I think it would be more straightforward if I chose her name myself to use as Yan Chan's alias. But that will be in another video. See, in the narrative of the game, Yan Chan's true identity was only meant to be revealed in the best ending. At the start of the game, we only know that she is starting her first day of high school as her alias and we only learn about her past through mental lapses when she sees or experiences something that triggers her traumas. We also get hints from dialogues with Senpai where he alludes to their first meeting being in a mental facility. The end of Nico's week signified the start of a turning point be it for the pacifist route, the genocide route, or the sociopath route, and it all pivots on this teacher character. So what happens next? Well, after our encounter with Nico, the teacher character has begun her investigation into Yan Chan's history after growing concerns that something isn't right about her. And this is the point in the game's narrative where we learn that our character is not who she says she is. With the teacher's keen interest in us, the player must be even more careful in how they navigate the social landscape to avoid further suspicion. If the player chooses to build a relationship with the teacher, she is a valuable resource for Yanchan to decompress, helping her make sense of her confusing state of mind and emotions. A positive relationship with her will also delay the teacher from looking into your history as she feels that you're not really hiding anything. Additionally, the teacher will provide Yanchan with a positive role model and guardian figure that she had always lacked in her life. Someone to look up to and rely on and feel safe around. This will help her stave off her darker tendencies and realize that there are people in this world that she can trust. It will guide her in the right direction of overcoming her yandere disorder. However, if the player chooses to ignore the teacher and fixate solely on their goal of winning senpai through unethical means, she will become a very difficult obstacle to overcome but both will prompt her to look into your history and find out that there's something off about you. However, she cannot act on her suspicion without substantial evidence. If the player is taking the genocide route where they've been eliminating rivals through murder, she will take on an adversarial role where she will be actively vetting you out as the primary suspect and serve as a major threat to unraveling your scheme. That is, finding out your true identity. If she finds enough evidence against you, she will immediately report you to the police for prosecution of your crimes. If the player is taking the sociopath route where they are eliminating rivals through expulsion or social manipulation, for example, forcing them to drop out or even take their own lives, she will still play an adversarial role, however, depending on your relationship with her, she may simply provide disciplinary action or guidance counseling or try to investigate your personal history, which would lead her to uncover your true identity and if she finds enough evidence to prove her claims, you will be sent back to the psych ward. In any case, this will also be the point of the narrative where we get a flashback sequence of Yan Chan's past in the psych ward and how she met Seiya, likely when the teacher sits her down to have a one-on-one -on -one talk. We find out she managed to fake her recovery and that she was discharged on probation, that she was only meant to attend school remotely until her doctor clears her. 
depending on the player's relationship with Seiya, this may provide Yan Chan the opportunity to reminisce those days with him. And if your affection score is high enough, he may even tell you why he ended up in the psych ward in the first place. Which would mean you would be the first person Seiya has opened up to about his attempt to take his own life and his rough family situation. More importantly, the fact that his sister has been taken away from him by Child Protective Services. However, with mounting suspicion on her identity, it very much seems like the ruse might be coming to an end. But now, she has so much more to lose from her blossoming relationship with Seiya to the friendship and connections she found with the other students in the school. But I think that's where we will leave things off for this video. I've decided to name this teacher character Akari Murakami, with Murakami being her surname. Let me know in the comments below your ideas for this point of the storyline. How do you think Senpai will react when he learns that Yanchan is pretending to be someone else? What ideas do you have for how the story unfolds? I also want to thank Gaomon for sending me their amazing tablet. And next time we will be discussing the nurse rival and let me just say, as a nurse myself, I have way too much to say about her. So look forward to that. If you haven't subscribed yet, do subscribe if you want to keep up to date to my next installment. I kind of feel like I'm writing a fan fiction in a video slash audiobook format, which is bizarre, but I really enjoy doing it, so like this video if you liked it too. I do have a Discord server where I interact with members pretty regularly, and I also have a Ko-fi account if you guys want to support me. Please follow me on all my social media, check out my comic because that will make me really happy, and I will see you all in the next video. Goodbye!